Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDrydocks.com and I've got a really cool submarine to share with you. Now, for those of you that moved quickly, you managed to get a bit of a preview for this on my Boxing Day sale. Uh, I put it up for sale and it sold uh, rather quickly. It is a very unique boat and I'm anxious to share it with you. So let's take a look. This is a 148 scale U.S. George Washington Carver ballistic missile submarine model. Uh, it was originally built by a gentleman by the name of Andre Burgess up from the uh, northeast part of the U.S. and he was a very prolific builder in 48 scale which was his favorite scale. This has not been completed um, but it's most of the way there and I want to show you how it's laid out, what it looks like inside and some of the things that I would do to finish it up if I were to finish building it, um, which I won't be. This is, uh, this is sold and it's going to a new owner. So let's talk about the hull itself. Uh, this is an exceptionally durable layup. Uh, I'm going to guess that it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Uh, fiberglass all the way around and that actually includes the uh, the sail you can see uh, this extremely durable and thick layup in there the uh, the dive planes uh, are actuated they just need to be loosened and spread a bit they're just binding on the side of the um, tower there but you can see um, SSBN 656 George Washington Carver was written in there and uh, and the creator's name Andre Burgess a Burgess in the tower there. The superstructure was uh, in process uh, when Andre ended up passing, so he didn't end up finishing it, but all of the main bulkheads are in place, so you can easily see where that missile deck needs to go and the profile of it along the side of the deck, and that's all marked out with tape there. There's two access points to the boat. There's uh, a central point right here. It's about two feet in length and there is another one in the back it's about six inches in length the tolerances are exceptionally uh, tight so the seams are absolutely gorgeous in this boat I'm gonna set this aside and if you want to come a little closer here you can see that uh, you know again the the construction is absolutely gorgeous we've got fiberglass bulkheads that actually extend all the way up to the profile of the missile deck in there and we've got the stiffening uh, versions of those down the sides as well. You got drains uh, in the bottom with uh, mesh on there to aid in draining. I would certainly open those up significantly though. This is uh, going to hold a lot of water when you're trying to pull it out and you want it to drain as quickly as possible. So I wouldn't be afraid to put a series of either rectangular or circular drains in here, you know, like an inch in diameter, maybe a dozen of them all down the keel of the boat so that that water drains as quickly as possible. You're going to want to put your main uh, watertight cylinder in this central area of the boat so that you've got easy access to it and then just run linkages and drive shafts uh, through the back here. Moving to the back you can see the uh, aft compartment and again, I'm just going to put this down so you can see the really tight seams. You know, it's like a razor's edge seam in there, barely, barely visible. So that just comes off right there and you can see the um, main drive shaft and then the linkages. And these are all taped up getting ready for transport. But you can see the, the linkages have actually already been run for these as well. It's a beautiful um, brass scimitar style propeller in the back. And you can see how easily that turns. It's just really just a hallmark of a good builder to have such uh, frictionless operation of that drivetrain. All right, now that I've given you an overview of the hull as it is, let's talk about it as the hull as I think it probably should or could be. 
uh, to finish it out. And I, as some of you know, I'm going through the pains of a large scale RC submarine build right now with that big German Type 21 submarine. And I think some of that methodology would be uh, good to extend to this build as well. For the, because you've got so much room in here, you can actually go with something like a dry hull submarine uh, sort of hybrid. And what I would recommend um, for the sake of, of ease and simplicity would be to actually grab something like a Pelican box uh, or even a high grade Tupperware container that has an airtight seal on the top. Now the advantage to that is that they are easily accessible. Traditional dry hull submarines uses a series of dozens and dozens and dozens of bolts all along the perimeter of the cap that lock the cap down to the base of the boat. That's exceptionally painful to get access to the inside of the boat in that particular case. But if you break down the components into subsections and make each subsection one of these pre-made, pre-engineered, professionally designed containers, a lot of that work ends up falling off your shoulders. And so what I would actually recommend is uh, a centralized ballast tank, one ballast tank, and you would need to calculate the size of that based upon your best guess as to the weight of the hull above the surfaced water line. Just as an aside for everybody who's not familiar, really the only purpose of the ballast tank is to lift what you want out of the water, out of the water. That's the, the main purpose of it for the purposes of a, of, a, of a remote controlled submarine. So you need to guesstimate the weight of the model above the surface water line, calculate the amount of water that you would need to take on in order to uh, displace that and, uh, and work out the volume of your ballast tank based on that. Um, I would go with either an air or water pump system. Um, gas, it, because of the, the size of the tank that's going to be needed, you'll go through a lot of liquid air uh, to, to do that. So you're going to want a pump style system, ideally a gear pump that's reversible um, with a solenoid to shut that flow off. Probably want to put a forward compartment in here that would drive your um, fair water planes that you can see on the top there. You could house the batteries as well, potentially. Although again, with so much room in here, I would simply go with sealed lead acid batteries sitting in the wet part of the boat. You've got so much room and you need a little bit of ballast anyway, we might as well use it. So sealed lead acid batteries, you could put those in the keel uh, or in the front and back of the boat as you see fit. And again, the beauty of having so much room, you could, you could literally rig them up in parallel to have 20 or 30 or 40 amps of capacity if you wanted. In the center, you have your ballast tank, and in the back, you would have your drive section. Uh, and that drive section would basically house servos for your rear dive planes and your rudders, as well as your main uh, drive motor. And in this particular case, I would go with a really big, beefy, brushed motor. Um, go to an auto salvage store. The heater motors that, uh, that drive the, the HVAC unit, the, the heater in a car, uh, are typically like 10 pole units, completely electrically isolated, and they have tremendous amounts of torque. So you can pick those up for like five or 10 bucks, and uh, you can use that to drive the boat. So that's what I would recommend in there as well. Um, other than that, it should be really straightforward. You've got lots of opportunity for additional features if you wanted to. Um, if you, you know, segregate the, the ballast tank a little forward, you could perhaps have some of the aft missile tubes fully functional. You've got lots of room for things to play with there. My advice to anybody though, especially if this is your first boat, walk then run. Get a functional boat in place, allocate room for the toys, like video cameras, missiles, and torpedoes. After that is done, then start adding features slowly. Make sure that each one is functioning perfectly, and then you can add them as you go. 
Well, there you go, guys. This project is absolutely not for the faint of heart, but uh, again, with something so big, you've got the options of getting a lot of kind of conventional stuff that you might even find at a hardware store to get it to go. You know, when you talk about the smaller boats, you're looking at specialized equipment, um, and that is certainly not the case with this boat. 103 inches in overall length and with a beam of about eight and a half inches. Um, lots of room to play with, but uh, of course the new owner is gonna need to make sure uh, that he's got a strong back available for pulling this out of the water. Uh, probably a custom carrier would be uh, an exceptionally good idea for pulling it out of the water and for transporting it you know, between a vehicle and or trailer and the pond. So I hope you enjoyed it. This is again a 48 scale George Washington Carver ballistic missile submarine project. Uh, really interesting, exceptionally unique, and I'm actually excited for the new owner to finish it up. I would love to see this thing in the water. Again, my name is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus, drydocks.com. Thank you for joining me, and we will catch you next time.